Hey, what's happening, YouTubers? We're back with a brand new action figure comparison, and I haven't done this in a minute. I think the last video I made, well, well the first one I ever did, was the black and gold suit Spider-Man figure back earlier this year. But we're back with another one because ever since I got this Shadow of Spawn figure from the Mortal Kombat game from McFarlane Toys, I kind of wanted to do a comparison between all the Spawn figures we've gotten from them so far. Uh, spoiler alert, though, it's going to be mainly with these three figures. I'm going to take Spawn with the throne out of this equation just because... Yes, he has half the cape, but I don't really consider that a complete figure just because when you take him out of the throne, dude's got half his cape missing. So what the comparison is going to consist of today is the Shadow of Spawn figure, which just came out, the Kickstarter spawn, and then the spawn, in my opinion, that kicked it off for the line was the Mortal Kombat 11 spawn with the sword. Now, just for context, I'm not going to be comparing the accessories they come with. Just the figures themselves because, of course, the Kickstarter one came with a plethora of accessories, but also it was a Kickstarter one. Anyways, I'm still going to compare it nonetheless. Without further ado, let's go and get started while I put Spawn with this throne back here. He's just going to chill. Now, I'm taking a look at Shadow of Spawn. Like I said in my initial review, in terms of the detailing of the head sculpt, it is a lot smoother than we saw in the original Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn release. You can see the head sculpt is much smoother. It does have a lot of the attributes of a comic book Spawn figure. Now, when come, taking a look at the rest of the sculpt of the figure itself, same can be said about the whole buck. It is a lot smoother and not as intricate or detailed as the other figures, but where it makes up for that is the color palette on there. It has the looks of the OG spawn with some modern takes on it. And then when taking a look at some of the accessories and details on this figure, there's a lot of reuse from previous spawn figures, like the cape and the boot. The only thing I would say about this that's a drawback is it's kind of missing something right here in my opinion. It looks too bare, apart from this little strap that's on his thigh something just seems missing there although don't get me wrong the ankle ball joints are much more improved than they were in the original Mortal Kombat 11 spawn when taking a look at articulations what do you expect from McFarlane toys especially if you had the previous Mortal Kombat 11 one the issue I run into consistently though is this faux butterfly joint like the ring keeps popping out so it's visible when you're trying to do toy photography shots or pose in certain dynamics overall where does this spawn fit in your collection Honestly, I think it could substitute as a comic book spawn, especially if you missed out on the Kickstarter one, and especially because this is readily available right now on Amazon, Big Bad Toy Store, or the McFarlane Toys website, which is where I got this from. I think it would easily pose as a comic book spawn figure, especially given the fact that that head sculpt is very true to the source material, in my opinion. All right, next we're going to take a look at the Kickstarter spawn, aka the toy of the year of 2021. Now, or is it 2020? I don't remember. Anyways, I'll be completely blunt with y'all. I forgot I had this in my collection because I collect so many things and so many properties that I remember moving and I was like, oh yeah, I have the Kickstarter spawn. But also I haven't really taken it out of the clamshell because just because I think it looks so neat and that clamshell in the presentation is nice. It's retro reminiscent. Some would say it's an homage to the old spawn figure that came out back in the day. There's a joke in that, by the way. Anyways, um, we're going to take a look at this. It's a very controversial one. The reason why I say that is because when this was initially pitched, a lot of collectors thought they were getting a fully articulated torso. What happened was they got a pre-posed one. That's where the controversial part is. To me, it doesn't matter that much in my opinion. What matters more to me is the neck that's actually attached on there because it's part of the head sculpt. So when you turn this head sculpt like that, there is a gapage right there. And speaking of head sculpt, you can turn it separately from the neck. The problem I have is when moving it up and down, that's where you see that gabbage, but it could be easily hidden with toy photography tricks. But when we take a look at the head sculpt itself, though, it's significantly different from like the original Mortal Kombat 11 release spawn. When you take a look, I kind of tend to think that the Kickstarter one has sort of a wider face when compared to these two. These two sort of have a skinnier head sculpt. That's not a bad thing either. It's just a preference, I think. I prefer the other two, in my opinion. But that's not taken away from the head sculpt of this Kickstarter one. It looks highly detailed. When taking a look at the rest of the figure, though, this is where this figure really stands out. First, the cape. This articulated plastic cape that can hinge back and forth, which I think is pretty neat. Another thing, the chains. I remember Tom McFarlane mentioned this during the Kickstarter campaign, saying that they're going to use real chains. What's ironic, though, about this is this spawn actually has a thigh cut right there below this little strap. I do kind of wish when they were making this figure, if they were going to add a thigh cut, they would have put it on both legs. But understandably so, they didn't want to add it on this because then, you know, I understand the company sometimes doesn't like the cuts or Todd doesn't like the, too many cuts. So I get it. Where this figure also suffers is the lack of articulation when it comes to the arms. It doesn't have double jointed elbows, so it can barely get 90 degrees. It's a little, like it's right there, but I don't know. It, it could use a little bit more range. The cape also hinders the articulation on the body. 
because it's attached to the shoulders or it's down on the shoulders, you can't really move it up or down as much. The torso, it does have the ball joint at the hip, which is good, honestly. It's it's not that bad. It's a decent range. But I think where this figure suffers is articulation. And this might be kind of controversial. For as much flack as the torso got, I didn't think it's that bad. I think the torso was sculpted really nice. Now, my opinion about this figure, where does it fit in your collection? Obviously, this is going to be a comic book display spawn, especially if you're a huge fan of the big capes. Now, if you're looking for toy photography shots, yeah, you can definitely get some cool shots out of this. Just see Lord Bev's work. He does a fantastic job with it. I saw him do a couple shots with Kickstarter spawn. looked amazing. If you want a more articulated spawn for comic book display or toy photography shots, I would recommend the Shadow of Spawn. Now, looking them at side by side, it might look night and day, but don't underestimate this figure. It's still a pretty solid spawn figure in my opinion. Last but certainly not least, we have the original Mortal Kombat 11 spawn, the one that came with his sword. Now the reason why I said earlier in the video that this was a spawn that actually kicked off spawn, in my opinion, in modern times, not the Kickstarter one, pun intended, whatever, shut up, is the reason why I say that is because, take yourself back to 2020, I know it's really hard because the year sucked that year, but March 2020, the beginning of March, I think it was March 3rd to be exact, this was going up on Walmart's website because Walmart was the first to release this figure. It never even showed up on the site. Everyone lost their minds. The reason why is because this was the first Spawn figure we ever got that was fully articulated since the 10th anniversary one. And I'm sorry to all the old heads out there that like that OG articulated Spawn. That one sucks in comparison to this, in my opinion. Don't come after me. I'm just saying it's, you know, it's all subjective, y'all. This is my opinion. I think this was truly better than that figure. And secondly, everyone wanted a Spawn figure. Spawn was sorely missing a lot of people's collection. I feel like the hype behind this figure really kickstarted Spawn's resurgence in the comic book world and also in the figure world because we hadn't, like I mentioned, seen a Spawn figure in so long. I remember seeing a little while ago someone compared this Spawn with the Kickstarter one and was like, which one looks more like Spawn? No, come on, this looks more like Spawn. Actually, dude, both look like Spawn because they're Spawn, moron. Anyways, this was kind of a modern take from Mortal Kombat 11. From what I remember in Todd McFarlane's interview at Toy Fair back in 2020, before the pandemic, Todd mentioned he talked to the designers at Mortal Kombat that designed the game and said, make Spawn Spawn in your own way. So I like this design of him. Yeah, there's some things missing that aren't part of classic Spawn, but to me, this is very sentimental just because finding this was a pain in the ass. And as I mentioned earlier, it was never available on the website. It was only available at select Walmart locations. They had like three page lists of stores throughout the country that had this in stock. I called every day asking which store had it. I never do that, but I was so hyped for this figure until one fateful day, one store in my area had it. They had two, so I still have one inbox of this figure. Now, some of y'all might be saying, well, actually, this is the real thing that kickstarted Spawn. I think it's this. If you look at every variation that they've made of this specific Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn, the one with the axe, the one with the mallet, they've all always sold out. And if you look at them on the resale market, they're always going for at least double the price they were when they were originally released. And when taking a closer look at the head sculpt, you can see all those intricate patterns and details on his face. It's going around his face. No, but you can definitely see it. And I think this figure looks still to this day is one of their best figures in the line, in my opinion. Now, where do I see this spawn fitting on my display? Honestly, anywhere. I think this could easily be in the comic book display, but more so it could be in a live action display. When you look at the details on his suit, like I mentioned, there are a lot more intricate patterns and details on this Spawn skin, I guess you can call it, than there were on the Shadow of Spawn, that it almost looks like it's lifelike. Kind of similar to what we saw in the movie with Michael Jai White. So where do I rank these Spawns? Well, the reason why I did this one last is because this might sound blasphemous to all y'all. I'll put Shadow of Spawn number three and then I'll put Kickstarter Spawn number two and number one in terms of Spawn figures from them so far in the past few years. I'm giving it to the Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. This Spawn, like I mentioned, did so much for bringing back Spawn in the limelight, in my opinion. So much so that Todd announced at New York Comic Con they've already got writers on board for the Spawn movie. All right, some overall thoughts on these Spawn figures as I see them displayed in my review station is each has served its purpose in an important way. This Spawn figure is something you can find at Target and retail. Same goes for the Shadow of Spawn figure. And if you also missed out on the Kickstarter Spawn and want a classic comic book Spawn that's articulated, you can definitely go with Shadow of Spawn. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. And speaking of the Kickstarter Spawn, this is just my theory and my speculation. I remember when this figure was up for Kickstarter. It funded fast. And to me, 
I think this Spawn figure, this Kickstarter one specifically, showed retailers that people still cared about Spawn. I think this Spawn figure was the catalyst to putting Spawn back on the retail shelves. If you notice that over this past two years or year and a half, we've seen a lot of Spawn figures on Target shelves. It's 2022 and we have a Salmon Twitch on the shelf. Who would have thought that would ever happen? Which brings me to this Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. To me, the Spawn that really resurged Spawn back into the limelight of the action figure community. This thing will always hold a sentimental place in my heart, but I also feel like Every finger is sequential when it comes to Spawn's popularity, especially in today's day and age. And with the new Batman vs. Spawn coming out in December, I'm even more excited to see what McFarlane Toys brings. But yeah, those are my overall thoughts, YouTubers, on these Spawn figures. Let me know in the comments below, do you have these figures in your collection? If not, which one would you like to add? And how did you ever feel about the Kickstarter Spawn? Be honest and truthful in the comments below. Sound off, y'all, and let me know what you think. And like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.